This morning, uh, I don't want to start this so many different ways. Pastor and I was talking this morning, and then Mama Kirk and I were talking this morning, and both of them were all in my message. And I actually pulled it out and started reading some of them, Mama Kirk. And she was like, oh, Lord, let me hush. But, you know, that, that, that's just how it is sometimes. That's how it is. But do y'all remember back in the early 90s, I believe, Salt and Pepper, and I'm not advocating secular music, but Salt and Pepper did a collaboration with En Vogue called What a Man, What a Man, What a Man, What a Mighty Good Man. Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, you, you remember that, huh? <laughs> well, this morning... This is going to be our subject. It's going to be what a pastor, what a pastor, what a pastor, what a mighty good pastor. Yes, he is. Now, if, if I was a songster, I, 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 would sing, I would sing it. Now, the song talks about a good man. Now, I, I really don't know what the whole song says, but, and, and I, like I said, I'm not advocating it, so don't go YouTube and listen to the whole song. But we're just going to go with the title of it. You know, y'all repeat after me. Say, what a pastor. What a pastor. What a pastor. What a mighty good pastor. I think y'all would all agree with me on that right there. And what, what makes pastor a great pastor is that he is one who will preach the word. Re regardless of what the situation is, he's going to preach the word. Matter of fact, Bill and I talk about this all the time, how pastors are scared to preach the word because members of their congregation might leave. Or they're scared to preach the word because they might cut their paycheck. But as we get into the scripture, you're going to see that his job is to preach the word. And not only does he preach the word, he lives the word. But before we go any further, I think we ought to get this man... Uh, the, the best hand clap, standing ovation that we can give him because he is a great pastor. Let, let's, <laughs> and, and, and not only for him, but for his wife also. I, I, she's a great first lady. <laughs> All right, there my clock is. I was looking for it. I'm like, I'll stay up here all day now if y'all want me to. <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting with verse number one in the King James Version. 2 Timothy 4, starting with verse number one. And it says, the, this, is, this is Paul talking to Timothy. And, and my main thing that I'm going to do here this morning is encourage pastor. In the same way that Paul was encouraging Timothy. This was at the end of, of, of Paul was getting ready to die. He was, he, he was, this was at the end of his life. And he was writing this. He was basically passing a torch also. Now, I'm not passing a torch to pastor, but I am going to encourage him because pastors need encouraging too. They, they preach so much and they teach so much and they're so busy, but pastors need to be preached to. They need to be taught and they need encouraging words also. But in this, in, this first, in, this, uh, in this first verse of chapter 4, this is what it says. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2 says, preach the word. Repeat me, say, preach the word. 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 Be instant. In season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke, exhort, all long suffering and doctrine. It goes on to say in verse three, for the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine. Read that again. It says, for the time will come when they would not endure sound doctrine. That sounds like now. <laughs> sounds like now. It goes on to say, but after their own lust shall they heat themselves, teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof 
of thy ministry. I'm going to read verse number two in the New Living Translation. 2 Timothy 4, verse number two in the New Living Translation. And it reads, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. It goes on to say again, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. We live in a time now where people just don't want to hear the word. People, some people don't want to hear the word. You can't be a UBC member and don't want to hear the word <laughs> because the word in EBC is kind of synonymous. Would y'all agree? If, if you're at EBC, you're going to hear the word. But there are people who really don't want to hear the word. That's what the, it's the itching ears. If we go back one chapter to chapter 3, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, listen, it says, You know this, Timothy, or you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. People will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful, proud, scoffing at, uh, at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving, unloving, and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel. Listen, this it says, they will hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And listen to what the Bible says. It says, stay away from people like that. Now, I, I was in our youth church a few Sundays ago, and, and one of our youth teachers, were, she was telling the children that what we teach y'all here, it needs to spill over into your everyday life. She said, what you teach, what we teach you here, you need to apply it to your everyday life. I say that to say this, what pastor teaches us, and I'm saying us because I'm not here Sundays, but I am, I, I hear every message y'all hear, believe me. What pastor teaches us, it needs to spill into our everyday lives. When, when people see, when people see us, they need to see the word manifesting through us. Because if, that, that's how the word, we're the only, peop, we're the only Bible that, that some people are going to see. We're on the Bible. When, when we step into our workplace, when you, when you step into nursing school, uh, you teach it at Northwestern, people ought to see a child of God before they see Al Pollard. Y'all agree with me? Northwestern, and, and wherever we may work, ought to be a better place. When we step in that place, it ought to be a better place just because we are a Christian. Listen, what makes pastor, and he told me this is not all about him, and I was sitting there, oh, if he sees my notes and he tries to downplay it and I don't want to make it all about him, he might say, Clint, don't preach this. But, but this, is, this is how God is using him. So actually, it's not all about him. It's about how God is using him or how God is working through him. What we learn here is something that shouldn't be taken for granted. Any of y'all who have been in other churches, now, other churches preach the word. This is not the only word church in the world. But there are a lot of churches where the word is not being taught. You have some people that would have been up here already and been into their hoop. And you'd be like, what are they saying? But here, the word is going to be explained. Okay, well, once the word is explained, we need to do something with the word. We, we need to do something with the word. Listen, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, one of my favorite scriptures. It says, well, three, yeah, three and 15, yeah. Well, three and 16, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, three and 16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God, and it is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Y'all do know we have things wrong with us in our lives. We, we, I'm one. I have, as, if any of well, a lot of y'all know me, I hate to be wrong. Probably the most thing I hate in, in my life is tardiness. I cannot stand tardiness. Uh, if it was me and I wrote the Bible, tardiness would have been a sin. 
And if it would have been in the Old Testament, if you'd have been late, you'd have been dead. <laughs> I cannot stand tardiness. I don't fool with people that aren't timely. Well, I don't fool with them much. You have to fool with some people. But, <laughs> but we all have something wrong. We all have something wrong in our lives. Some of us have a smart mouth, flip mouth. Some of us are not as patient, such as I. And some of us just, just bad. <laughs> just bad. But listen, it says, this is what the word says. It says, uh, sort of, it says, all scripture inspired by God and it is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us to do what is right. Now listen, a good pastor, a good pastor is going to correct us when we're wrong. Now, a lot of us don't like to be corrected. Now, I just said I don't like to be wrong. So by me not liking to be wrong, I had to learn how to be corrected. I had to learn how to be corrected. That, that's just not something that people take openly is correction. And, and, and what I had to learn is, well, if somebody's correcting me, I'm wrong about something. Well, okay, well, well, this is what the scripture says. This is how you apply the scripture. The scripture says it teaches us when we are wrong. It, it teaches us when we're wrong. It corrects us, excuse me, corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Now, this is the thing. We have all sinned. Every one of us in here have sinned. Okay, we have sinned. But when we realize we mess up, we need to correct that and then do what is right. That's the kind of teaching that we receive here. We're all going to mess up, but what, but what happens after we mess up? We need to do what is right. And what's so bad in the church is we'll mess up and we'll keep messing up. And we'll keep on and keep on and keep on. And then we'll holler, well, the Bible says God will forgive us. The Bible says we've all you know, sin and falling short of the glory. Yes, it does say that, but it's not in there for us to use as an excuse, as a crutch. That's in there because God does know that we're human and we are going to make a mistake. But I, I like to, I use this analogy a lot of times. When I don't, I don't, I know very little about little children because I don't have any. But I do know that if a one-year-old uses the bathroom on him or herself, it's okay. Sometimes people look at it and oh, that's so cute. No, nah, it's, it's really not to me anyway. <laughs> it's not. But I understand. But, but it's okay if, if a baby uses the bathroom on him or herself. Two, I think, yeah, probably still, or they should be in that transition. And then when they get to be four or five, well, it might happen sometime. But when they get to be 20, uh, unless they have a medical problem, they, they shouldn't be messing up their underwear. Well, that's just like us. As Christians, when we are baby Christians, we're going to mess up. But the same thing that I was messing up at 10 years ago, I shouldn't be messing up on that same thing now. Churches split over crazy things. Cr crazy things. Who's going to preach the anniversary? What color's anniversary going to be? Well, they sang last year. Why I can't sing this year? What difference does it make? That's an immature Christian. But that goes on in a lot of churches. But when you apply the scripture, which is it says all scripture is inspired by God, when you apply the scripture to things like that, the problems will go away. Who really cared, and when I say that, any other ministers shouldn't have cared that, that Craig opened up this morning. But you have some preachers in some churches, well, I feel like I, I've been here longer. I, I, I should have been the one that done it. That, that's, that's immature. That, that, that's, that's very immature. But listen, not only does it say that about the scripture, but listen what it says in verse 17. It says, God uses it, it being the scripture, to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. It didn't say some good works, it says every good work. When you look around EBC, this is truly a ministry of excellence. It, it, it is, it, it really is. As a matter of fact, do this right quick. Pastor can't do everything by himself. 
He, he cannot do everything by himself. This morning, the musicians was here, and then you had different people coming in at different times. I want everybody in leadership, if you are over a ministry here at EBC, would you stand? Don't be scared. Just stand. I'm not going to put you on front street. I'm not going to put you on front street, believe me. I, I, I see Brother Richard back there. I went out and talked to them in the parking lot this morning. I used to park cars here. I used to park cars. Listen, y'all keep standing. Y'all uh, keep standing. I'm not finished with you. I, I want everybody to look around at your leaders here. Pa pastors up here all the time. And I know you know your leaders too. Every, and I know most of y'all. Some of y'all I don't. But look around at your leaders. Y'all are a vital part of this ministry. Now, I, I want, yeah, we, we need to give, yeah. Now, now you can sit down. <laughs> now, whether or not people realize it, y'all shoulder a big load, a big load. And it's important that, that, that we, leaders and everybody, that we apply this scripture so we can be effective. Now, is, is excellent, in, in the excellent manner that this church operates in, your ministry that you're over should operate in that same excellent ministry. Take it a step further. If you are a Christian, every part of your life should operate in excellency. When we step on our job, we should do it in an excellent manner. When we're driving down the road, we should be driving in an excellent manner and not 30 miles over the speed limit. The, the, the court shouldn't be full of Christians because we should operate in an excellent manner. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> if you will, go with me to Acts the 17th chapter. Acts 17 chapter, verse number 11. Start with verse 11. Acts 17, start with verse 11. When this word, when this word is taught to us, we also need to do what the children of Berea did. Listen, the 11th verse of chapter 17 in Acts, it says, And the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. It says, They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. Because actually, if you read before that, they had just got run away. But I don't have time to get into all of that. It says, they searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. Listen to what happened now. Verse 12, listen to what happened. It says, as a result, many Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek men and women. Listen, when you search the script, when somebody's teaching you, search the scripture. When I'm, what I'm saying today, make sure I'm not just shooting you a bunch of stuff. Search the scripture. Do cross-references. If, if, if I say something that you don't believe, ask pastor. Y'all know he know the word. Ask pastor. But you have the word in front of you because y'all have been taught, or we have been taught, bring your Bibles, take notes, look at the monitors. Listen, read this again. It says, and the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. They listened eagerly. They listened eagerly to Paul's message. I was eager to get here this morning. Honestly, I wish I could have heard Pastor preach this morning or his wife. He, I would have been fine with either one. But eager, when you're eager, I can imagine, now I'm, I'm using Craig and Danny, I'm using Danny and, and Constance. Got a, yeah, got a good one for Constance. Constance and Danny came to town, well, this has been about a, a year or so ago. They, they came to town. We were at Bill's church. And I got bamboozled. After church, kind of just laughing. She know where I'm going with this. And she, I just heard, I sure did. After church, we went by Bill and Mills and we ate. And after church on Sunday, I eat. I don't want to do anything. But Connie had an ulterior motive. She and Mel apparently had planned that we were going to decorate. And I didn't want to have any part of it. But after watching Connie pull hammers and saws and everything else out that Danny could have and had, she was eagerly anticipating on decorating Mel's house. And it looks good. But I watched the passion 
and energy she put into doing that. And I also watched how I tried to get out of it and couldn't get out of it. And, 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 I'm, and I'm finna put Danny on the spot now. And Danny wanted to get out of it too. But, but by Connie being his wife, he knew better. <laughs> he knew better. And he did what a husband was supposed to have done. He, he, he did. But my point is, she was eager to do it. Mel was eager to get it done. And Danny, Bill, and I, we were eager to get it over with. So, so y'all understand what eager is. But now, when we apply that to the word, it says that they were eager that they, they were eager for the word, and they searched the scriptures daily. How passionate are you, or how passionate am I about getting into God's word? And not only about how passionate are we about getting into God's word, how passionate are we about obeying God's word? Because, you know, we should not only be a hearer of the word, but a what? But a doer of the word. It's easy to hear the word, but it's, a, it's not as easy to do the word. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. The easier it gets. Listen. Go with me to, to Romans, the first chapter. Romans 1, starting at verse 18. Romans 1, 18. Listen. Well, I started verse 18. It says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress their truth by their wickedness. They know the truth. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. How has God made the truth obvious to us? Through Pastor Adams, when he's teaching. Now, now we have to study on our own. He can't give us everything, but he teaches the truth. It says, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to him. It really can't get any more plainer than when pastor preaches the word. It really can't. Verse 20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature. So listen to this. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. 21. Yes, they know God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they, listen to this, and they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Verse 22. Claiming to be wise, Instead, became other fools. Have y'all ever taught anybody when you were talking to them? They talked like they knew everything. And you in your mind, like, you really sound stupid. <laughs> now, I hope that word stupid doesn't offend anybody. I'm not calling anybody stupid. But, but myself, I have been guilty of acting stupid before. So, I, so everything I'm telling y'all is it, to me, too. But it says, claiming to be wise, instead they became utter fools. Go on, verse 23. It says, and instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds <clears throat> and animals and reptiles. Listen to this. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. And as a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Verse 26. Listen to this. this uh, that is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. This is what I'm getting to. I read all that to get to this. It says, even the women turn against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with, other, with each other. Verse 27, and the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, listen to this now, they burned in lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve. Now where am I going with all this? I read this because we have a pastor who is not scared or ashamed to get up here and preach that homosexuality is wrong. It, it's wrong. You, you have some preachers who, they won't preach that. Well, God loves everybody. Well, yeah, of course he loves everybody. I'm sure all y'all love your children. 
You love them when they mess up. But when they mess up, they're wrong. How, listen, how perverted can this be? It says that men burn in lust. Is it, well, it goes, it says that men, instead of having normal sexual, sexual relations with women, burn in lust for each other. Now, I, I'm going to tell you how nasty that is. <laughs> Craig, let, let me use you for an example, Craig. Can, can I? Let me use Craig. Let, let me. <laughs> now, 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 I, I think, and Al, you will tell you, Craig is all right. And when I say all right, y- y- y'all remember Sanford and Son. When, when, he, when Fred went like that, what did he mean? Y- y'all, okay, y'all know, and, and I'm not, first of all, I'm not making fun of anybody who may be in that situation because that's sin just like a man and a woman being together before marriage. That's sin also. That, 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 that's sin also. I, I personally have two classmates who, you know, and, and I don't treat them any differently. I see them, I hug them. At one time, I couldn't hug them, though. But I have gotten past it. I, I don't treat them any differently. They, they, they are people. I, I love them to death. But I don't like that lifestyle. A, a good friend of mine's brother is, is a homosexual. I guess that, I don't mean to sound derogatory. He is, well, he, like, he married a man. I put it like, he married a man. And his husband got killed. So when that happened, I called my friend, and I, I said, I'm just calling because I heard that your brothers, and I, I paused, I said, buddy got killed. He said, you can say this is his husband. And I said, well, he, he said, and we don't agree with it just like you don't agree with it. But I called him, I said, but I'm calling to tell you that I know that's your brother, and even though you don't agree with it, he's your loved one. And when a loved one hurts, you hurt too. So I said, I'll let to say this, even if someone is living a, a lifestyle of sin, you still don't treat them wrong. If, if, if they hurt, you need to be passionate and compassionate. Funny. But, but what I'm saying about Craig here, we're talking about men burning in lust for other men. Okay, now, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that Alia, I'm pretty sure that Alia thinks Craig is all this. And, and to her, he should be. But for me to burn in lust for him, that's nasty, y'all. That, that, that's nasty. Uh, that, and, and for him to burn in lust, that, that's nasty. That, that shouldn't be. That, that, that shouldn't be. And, and we have to preach that in the church. Oh, you sit down. Go ahead. He's able to sit down. <laughs> yeah. He, now, they are married. They need to burn. He, look, he hugging her. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm good, too. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm good, too, now. Now, now, now they, they are supposed to be together. They are supposed to want each other. And I think, well, I know, yeah, they got two. Y'all, yeah, got four, but I think two of them are here. And, and that's how they got here. <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how they got here. Okay, but we have, pe- you have people now who, who say that people like this great pastor right here ought to marry somebody like me and Craig. What kind of foolishness is that? How, how, and you know what? Some pastors will give in to it. If I don't do it, they're going to get rid of me. Tell you what my pastor says. If you're going to get rid of me for pre- preaching God's word, get rid of me. Get, get rid of me. <laughs> if you're going to preach, if, if you're going if, if to get mad at me for living God's word and, and doing what I'm supposed to do, get, get rid of me. Get, get rid of me. We have to stand on God's word. And that's the only way the church is going to be effective. We have to stand on God's word. Listen, even, even in, the, in the elections and in, in the polls and our, our presidents, we need to apply God's word to who we vote for. We, we just say it, and the, well, the Bible says it, that homosexuality is wrong. So why would we vote for somebody who believes that, that a man and a man and a woman and a woman have the right to marry each other? The world was destroyed because of that. One of the reasons it was destroyed. So why would we put somebody in charge of our country who believes in homosexuality? 
Why would we put somebody, why would we vote to put somebody in charge of our country who would believe in anything that the word does not say? We'll vote for somebody just because we like them. We'll vote for somebody just because they're a Democrat or a Republican. We'll vote for somebody just because they're black or just because they're white. That's not why you should vote for somebody. You should vote for somebody to, for, for any office. But president, which I'm talking about, we need to vote for somebody who's going to stand on what the word of God says. That's just like when you're getting a pastor for a church. A lot of people get a pastor because he can sing. A lot of people will get a pastor because he can hoop it up. A lot of people would get the pastor because his daddy was the pastor. But can the joker preach? Does he know the word of God? And not only does he know it, does he live it? Does he live it? Does, does he live it? Listen. Oh, there I am right here. It says, and the men, instead of having normal sexual relationships with women, burned in lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. <laughs> did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within them the penalty they deserve. People, we need to be very thankful that we have pastors like Pastor Adams who will preach this word, who will stand on this word, who, will, who lives the word, who will correct us when we're wrong, and he will correct us. I have had to be corrected by him. <laughs> Didn't really like it. But you know what? When we apply the scripture, when you're wrong and you realize you're wrong, that means you're a growing Christian. One more thing. Let's go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse number one. When we have a good pastor, when we have a good pastor like Pastor Adams, this, this is what will happen. Psalms 37, one. we're going to live this. We need to live this. Psalm 37, 1, a psalm of David. Listen to this. It says, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Listen to this, verse 3. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Verse 4. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. This is what I'm getting to. Verse 5, it says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will help you. When we apply this word that we hear every Sunday, every Wednesday, when we apply it to whatever we're doing in our lives, it ha whatever we're applying it to has to change. The, the word, the word, the W-O-R-D, the word cannot meet a problem and that problem still exists. Won't happen. Won't happen. It, it's impossible to happen. Now, the problem might not go away like we want it to go away. But you know what, Sister Kirk, every other word this morning out of her mouth, she was saying, Mama Kirk was saying, God is good. <laughs> God is good. She'll talk a little bit and she like, Clint. God is good. Well, you know what? God is so good is, God is so good that we can apply his word. And listen, it says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Let's go to verse 6. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn and, your, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Verse 7. Listen to this. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. You know, we can get ahead of God. I have been very guilty of that. It says, be still in the presence of God, of the Lord, and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people and who prosper or fret about wicked schemes. Verse 8, stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Don't lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Something else we learn from teaching. Everything is not going to go our way. So if it doesn't go our way, Commit whatever the problem is, commit it to God. And when we commit it to God and we keep doing it, now, will it ever be hard? Yeah. Any of y'all ever feel like hitting somebody upside the head? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> Mama Brenda, you ever want to hit down there? You do. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happens. It happens. 
Danny wanted to hit costumes that day. We were doing that decorate. <laughs> Danny back there like, no, 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 no. But now I'm just playing about the hidden. I know it won't be in the hidden. But, but what I'm saying is this. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. And don't lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Listen, people. Started off talking about what a pastor, what a pastor, what a pastor. What a mighty good pastor. Yes, he is. He teaches us how to deal with these problems. He teaches the word. He gives handouts. You, you can get the CD. You can, you can get the DVD. You can go online and watch it. You take notes. When we apply this word to our lives, our lives are going to change. Whether it be sickness, whether it be marital problems, whether it be problems at work, regardless of what it is, when we apply this word to our everyday lives, our lives are going to change. My encouragement to you, Pastor, keep preaching the word. Regardless of what anyone says, regardless of what the, the, the lawmakers say, preach the word. My encouragement to the congregation, do what the children of Berea did. Search the scriptures daily to see what Pastor Adams is teaching you is true. Apply that word that he teaches to our everyday lives. And our situation is going to get better. All hearts and minds satisfied? Let us close with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you and praise you and lift you up. Lord God, I pray that if there's anything, Lord God, that, that we need to, to do that you're not pleased with, I pray, pray that the word will manifest it within us, Father God. Lord God, I pray that we understand that in this day and time, and we need pastors that are going to preach the word. We need pastors that are going to stand on the word. So, Lord God, I just pray that everything that not only the DBC does, but all churches, Father God, I pray that everything that all churches do is pleasing in your sight, Father God. Lord God, I pray that the church will be effective in this earth realm. I pray, Lord, Father God, that, that we understand that we are the only Bible that some people are going to see, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that we walk in a way that when people see us, that they don't see us as individuals, but they see the Christ in us, Father God. Lord God, I pray that in all we do that you get the glory. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.